CodeCamp back in development and APIs in the basic Node and Express course, and we are going to use the .env file. So the .env file, pretty simply put, is a file that contains environment variables for your application that is secret. So no one else can access it, but you can use it to store data that you want to keep private or hidden. Example, API keys, database URI, some people even put ports, port numbers in there. Um, basically, you can access anything in the .env file with process.env and then whatever the variable name is. And it is important to note that when you put variables in your process.env file, there is no quotations and no spaces. So variable name equals whatever the value is. And you do need the .env package. So if you're on a local machine, you'll have to go to your code here and then you'll want to kill the terminal npm i.env like that and then install that and then oh, as we can see here um, in replit we don't have access to .env even though it is in our package.json so this is pre-installed in this project here we have a secrets uh, tab here where environment variables so as you can see I have message style already added which is what we're gonna do for this challenge and I'll just delete this so we can actually do the challenge um, so yeah basically you would just kind of copy this and put it in a .env file if you're doing it on a actual local machine that's how you'd actually do it new file just .env always has to just have this name dot first because it's a hidden file but we can't do this here because this is replit it's a sandbox so we'll use the secrets tab and we'll say message style and the value being uppercase so this is the same as if we were in a .env file we'd say message style uppercase like that okay so we can add this new secret and then to access this secret uh, we can use process.env and then bracket notation so if we go here it's not going to really show us but okay my app that js and basically for this challenge all it wants us to do is conditionally render uh, different responses so either hello json based on this message style variable or hello json in caps if it exists so again if you were working in your local machine you would use env and you'd have to add require.env.config to the top of your file uh, kind of like this go up here and require.env config. So because we're not in a local, minus the spirit, because we're not on our local machine, we're doing this in the sandbox like PC or free code camp requires, we basically have to use the secrets key or the secrets tab there. So we are going to conditionally render based on the slash JSON route. So we can just take everything from the last challenge here, copy it, paste it below, and then let's uncomment this out. So you do want to comment this last challenge out because we are going to remake this route and have it conditionally respond. So process.env, that's the same. And then if you were using a local machine, again, you'll use dot syntax, but we are going to use bracket because we are on replit. So we can basically just take this, open it up and have a condition here and say if oh, process.env and then the key here so the secret is message style and it basically is showing us that we can instantiate it in a variable process.env message style so like this uh, like that we don't even need that we're just going to use access it directly with message underscore style if this variable message style is equal to the string of uppercase which it is we are going to respond with a JSON so the same thing here and this is going to all be in caps so hello JSON otherwise if that variable does not equal uppercase we can else take this paste it in there we can just respond with the normal hello JSON not an uppercase so when we go to this route, if that variable is equal to uppercase, we'll respond with caps. If not, we'll respond with 
you know, normal printed. So that's all we should have to do for this challenge. Let's run this. Take our link to our live project. So here it is. And then we can go to the slash JSON route. And we can see it is in fact an uppercase. I do have a JSON parser. So if we go raw, this is what yours will probably look like. But parsed, same thing, right? Hello JSON. And that is happening because we are conditionally rendering based on that environmental variable. This is not how you would actually use environmental variables in a live full stack project. Never can I think of a time where you would uh, respond differently based on a environmental variable. But uh, the whole point of this lesson is to kind of teach you that in your code, you can access these secret variables with process.env, variable name, uh, to do different things in your code. So whether it's the URI to connect to the database or it is uh, the port number or anything like that or API keys, you can access them just like normal variables using this process.env and the end user will never be able to see what they are. The code will plug them in and the .env file will be secret and nobody will be the wiser and your data is secure in that .env. So not a very realistic use case of env, but it does, I guess, get the point across that, hey, you can access that variable no matter where you are in your code with the process.env, and um, you can do different things with it and keep things that you need to keep secret secret. So that's all we have to do for that one. Let's just paste the solution in here and complete the challenge.